Quitter, we cannot hear you do or see do. I'm not sure about the connection, but if you want to leave and come back in, see if that helps. I am so sorry. It's okay. I was like getting my coffee. I was like, oh, she's coming. I'm just going to grab my coffee. Yeah, you have been a busy girl. Very, very busy. But it's good. I'm it's so good. Nap. You need to take a five minute nap. We can wait. As long as I have my coffee and my maker mark, um, I've, like, I've been drinking this in every interview, just like pounding back coffee. Okay, before we start, I want to introduce my interpreter. Her name is Krista. She will be interpreting while you speak. I will be simcoming, signing while I speak to give a full accessibility for this podcast. Amazing. So cool. God, I wish I could sign. It's something I wish I could do. I'm going to have to learn. You'll have to teach me. Question, uh, do you want me to invite your agent? In the podcast, or do you want me to leave them alone? I think, I think she's okay. I, I don't know that she needs to. She can come in if she'd like, but I, I'm not, I don't think she, she's oh, probably I fine. I didn't want to make because I didn't want to cross the boundaries or what, oh, I, can yeah, do, yeah. what I can't do. So, it's okay. all good. Well, anyway, thank you for your time and out of your busy schedule, I was surprised to get you the night before the movie. I was, uh, Hmm. Good yeah. thing I'm excited for the movie, so thank you. Welcome to the Cat Jack podcast. Happy to have you here today. I'm very, very happy to be here. This is um very it's as you can tell, I'm very excited. <laughs> yeah, I was I was watching your interview with that panel on Budden and the other interview like one after another, 20 minutes of Tyler. One hour, one hour of Krista, and I don't know how long with cat. So amazing, that <laughs> funny story. When you post that a short live on your Instagram, so I can to cat page. I'll be there to talk about the movie. I'm like, she my name. But I'm like, oh. oh, she my cat bearer. My bad. But also but this cat. <laughs> so now I'm going to have to do another video and be like, go to other cat's page and see me on her page. Cat 2.0. <laughs> Definitely. Well, you can see I'm wearing the gear shirt for the I, podcast, and I will be wearing that tomorrow night. Amazing. This is amazing. You know, like I'm, 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 I'm not unfamiliar with dedicated fans because I'm on Science Sealed, and the postables are, you know, like fiercely, fiercely loyal. And, but I just didn't even, I couldn't wrap my brain around what that would look like when we got the Postables, the Heinies, and the Erpers, and the Good Witchers together. Like, I, I didn't, I don't think I really comprehended what that was going to, what that was going to be. And it's amazing. Like, it's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Definitely, because I was just talking to Krista about background and everything about you and the movie. I told the, the Heinies, I'm like, oh, that's the fandom. to a whole bunch of people who back up Tyler. And then we have the Good Witch who backed up Cat. And then yeah. we have the Coachable who backed up Quister, Quister. You name it, those all of the fandom yeah. in the movie. We need to create a movie where it's all about the fandom. Oh, that would be amazing. I'd be in the movie. <laughs> that would be amazing. I actually would love that. I, I need to direct that. And then I'll just have a cameo wearing the shirt of whatever the show is called. That'd be amazing. It's like, you know, we've kind of done our version of Barbenheimer. Remember when Barbie and Oppenheimer came out and everyone kept saying Barbenheimer? That is sort of what's happening here, but on the Hallmark level. I love it. It's perfect. I think both of those movies, they're pretty good overall. So put them together. Then you it's guys even better. Movie. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um... I want to talk about your experience. How did you get into Ashley Williams program, Make oh. Her Monk, and how that experience and journey for you at directing a burnt movie, shift, shifting gears, so please explain. Oh, well, you know, I've been directing for a long time. So I started in 2012, but I started with my own short films 
Um, and then I also started producing short films. So I, I had already wanted to be moving into behind the camera. I already wanted to try. Um, I am also relentless. And once I've decided I want something, I'm doing it. <laughs> so um, I, you know, I, I have been asking Hallmark. Um, I've been talking to Joel Rice uh, about it for years and years and years saying, listen, I really want to do this. And they were both very encouraging and they kept saying, Hey, keep, keep going. You know, um, I've applied for Ashley and I have talked about this before in another podcast, but her and I have both applied for so many mentorships, you know, and been denied. That's why Ashley started this because she kept getting denied over and over and over again. Um, and I'm still applying for mentorships. I'm going to apply for every mentorship to Lundette until I can get, I want all the experience. I have zero ego. I will never feel like I've learned enough. Um, and I, and I love learning. I'm obsessed with it. So, you know, when I actually finally got this one, it was, I mean, it just made sense, you know? Um, and, and I've talked a little bit about this before, but I've, you know, had people think or assume, well, you're on the Hallmark channel. They're just giving it to you. Uh, no, no, not, not, that did not happen. And I always refute that with, you know, I have been on the Hillmore Journal for eight years begging. You know, this was not a handout by any means. They really wanted to vet the people that they're working with. I had to prove, you know, what I had already done. Um, I, I had submitted through Ashley after we had a casual hike that I thought was a hike that was actually an interview. Yeah. <laughs> and um, she just kept telling me, you know, here's what you got to do. Keep pushing your stuff. Go make your things. Ashley is like one of the most amazing women at um, opening the gate. And so is Jessica Harmon. And, and so is Linda Lisa Hader. And I, I don't know if that's a female trait, but they don't gatekeep. You know, they really opened the door to me asking any question and every question. They never felt like I was a threat. If anything, they were like, no, go hurry up. You know, Ashley, especially in, with this program. And so when I interviewed for it, she called me and said, I got you an interview. And I was like, and then uh, the day that they told me it was a Thursday. Oh, no, sorry. It was a Thursday? Yeah. It was a Thursday, and I was sitting at my kitchen table, and my friend was over, and she was watching my son while I was having this interview, and Casey woke up, and she was trying to be quiet, sitting there listening, you know. And then they, they had the interview, and they said, okay, well, we'll talk to you later. We got to interview other people. And then they called me back and said, hey, can we just get on with you again? We want to record you. And I was like, oh, God. Did I do something wrong? What has happened? Like, did I did I say something and they need it on file? And they were recording me because they were telling me I got it. <laughs> I don't know why that's not where I went to. I went, of course I went to, I'm in trouble. Um, and my girlfriend was on the other side of the camera like this. <laughs> you know, screaming be, uh, behind the camera because nobody knew she was there. And I'm like, oh my God, what is this happening? I found out I got it on Thursday and had to fly out Monday, which was intense because I have two small children. I have a two-year-old and an eight-year-old, you know? Um, but the thing about Ashley's program is that she was so thorough and I really can't sing her praises enough in asking the right questions for what people need. So we were provided a stipend, you know, it wasn't like a crazy amount, but it was a livable wage that I could pay and, for help. And luckily my husband really stepped up to the plate and, you know, because of that stipend, we could afford childcare. And I got on a plane and and then the rest is history. Um, and I am to, I mean, I answered that so long. I'm sorry, Kat. I just took up like half the podcast with one answer. But <laughs> um, I am obsessed with directing. I'm obsessed. Like I, I love it. I also write too. And it's really filmmaking. I'm a filmmaker as a whole and still an actor. You know, like it's, it's just, um, I found my, I found my place and I do all three. And um, I am unapologetic about it, which is a nice feeling for me. I was working with the writer of the script, Matt, Matt Monk. Mm -hmm. I was like working with him because you're the directing, so you kind of like call all of the shot. Who goes, well, what, what happened? Is that, I'm going to ask you about Tyler a little bit later. But of course. Calling all the shots. So how was it like to work with the writer that you had? have a chance to like put your input in the script and mm. how each scene or event should happen or go along with that. You know, the thing with these movies is that usually they acquire them. Like I, I believe this was an acquired script, which means they bought the script already and then they were shopping it around. 
I, I don't quote me on that, but I think that's how it worked. So I never got to meet Matt and work directly with him. Joel worked with the writer, uh, one of our producers, Joel Rice. Uh, we would give notes. And Joel did call me in the beginning after reading it and saying, said, do you have any notes? Um, do you have any ideas? Which I did, of course. Um, and then, you know, on the day, we also changed things um, in rehearsal. We, uh, Mike Barbuto, who's my producer for life, I love him. Uh, we sat down for eight hours, you know, before we even went to the rehearsal and like fine tooth combed, really looked for things. I'm always, look, it's my first movie. So am I going to rewrite a script? Absolutely not. Also, the writer gave me a good script. But um, am I, what do I want to put my input in? For sure. I'm always going to look at deepening the characters. And because I write, I get it. When you're writing, you're writing this entire story you got a lot to write. It's our job as the actor to take the character and give them depth and make them into a 3D person. But because I come from in front of the camera, it's already in my brain. So a lot of my notes when it comes to people's scripts are like, yeah, but where does that come from? Who is this? How do we deepen this character? I want it to feel rich, like a, like a fully fledged person because that's you know my trade <laughs> originally coming in. So I did have some some control over that. We definitely changed some lines. Barbie and I definitely went in there and, you know, took a, a, a great script that we had already and just made it work for our cast as well. Awesome. I have a few questions from, uh, from the high need or right. the cast build or the post build. I'm just going to pick here and there. Um, the first one, of course, what was it like directing Thailand? And how was he overall with the whole movie shifting games? I understand that he had his family come out and it was just an absolute fun and a family event and just, you know, part of how Mark, you know, family. So I wanted to know the experience working with Tyler mm. and how it incorporates throughout the whole movie. So funny because part of me wants to be like, wouldn't you like to know, not tell me? You know, just because I know that's going to make people want to know more. Uh, I know y'all want to know what Tyler's like. Um, Tyler's exactly what you think. And if you've talked to him for five minutes, he's no different than when you talk to him than when he is on set. And, and you know, it's a compliment because that's not always true of everybody, right? Um, he uh, brought his family on, which I loved. That was that was one of the things I loved the most. And watching him with his family is very generous with them. He's obs obsessed with them and adores his nieces. I'm all about that, you know? And I'm all about watching actors just be humans. <laughs> you know, watching them just be real and having your mom there humbles you and makes you real no matter what. Uh, and she felt like everybody's mom, you know? Cause Betty was behind me. I'm like, there she is, she's getting footage, great. You know, it was, it was, that was a treat. It was a treat. And it's so funny because people are like, how was it working with Tyler? Were you nervous? You know, and I was like, Tyler is not scary in any way, shape or form. Tyler's super approachable and normal. That's why you like him on screen. You might not even know that. Yes, look, he's very handsome. I think that's clear. He's got the thing, that smolder thing. We all know that. But I think what the fans really love about him is that they can feel he's someone they could actually talk to and that they could go up and have a really in-depth conversation with. And that is a different thing too. He doesn't feel um, so held back that you couldn't just sit with him. And the thing about Tyler too, that I will say that I enjoy is that Tyler can sit with you in silence. And that's a really amazing trait. Somebody that can just hang and chill and, and is comfortable to do that. I really respect that. Cause I'm not like that. I talk 50 miles a minute. You know, I would really like to be somebody that can just sit and be and watch. I, I think it's a beautiful trait about him and why uh, he's very open, you know, on camera. Do any of the actors like Kristen Booth, Kat Bell, or Tyler have like help or any input with helping you direct the whole shipping guild? Um, no, not directing it, but they, they come at a, at a different, you know, they'll, they absolutely can, will come to me and we would have discussions about it. Like, Hey, I think this is where it should be moving. This is where, you know, this doesn't feel right. I'm an actor's director, obviously, cause I act, I teach acting. I love actors. Like I, I want to play. 
Um, and, you know, I think the, usually the disconnect between directors and actors is directors don't normally know anything about it. <laughs> they're really good with camera and telling story visually, but they're not in tune with that. Whereas I, I lead with that. Um, but what I learned as, as a director that will help me in my acting is my job is the overall picture, right? Sometimes when you're acting and you're, and you're only in that character, you can get lost in that because you're only thinking about what that person is going through as opposed to what an entire story arc has to go through with five multiple characters and one always actively affects the other. That's the job. Um, so that was good for me to learn, you know, and I'm working with established actors that were really good that I could play with, you know, that I, I could kind of go, let's do one for you and one for me, or what do you think about this? And how can we move that? And my door is always open for actors to suggest something, especially when it comes to their character, because they know their character inside and out. So, um, yo, know, it was very collaborative. If that's what you mean, we definitely sat together. Tyler was really good. He's very good at finding logical errors. Thank God, because I am not, you know, so if things logically didn't make sense, he was like, guys, this doesn't make sense. This is, why would he sell this acquisition? What? You know, I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. Logically, that does not make sense. You know, so that he is very astute to those things, which is great. Um, another question, um, but I'm sure you already said the answer, but first directing job, are you more like leading to excitement or were you more nervous or do you be like, I can do that. That move bad. Um, all of those things, but in like a different order. And then they would mush up. <laughs> then they would flip upside down. You know, and never did I think I couldn't do it. That's a lie. Maybe there was one or two times where I was like, I don't know if I can do, but it was fleeting because I know I'm supposed to be here um being bossy is not hard for me <laughs> telling people what to do uh yes I've been trying to do that for all my life my husband's mm -hmm. over it so good um but I, I you know excitement mainly but also growth I love growing I don't care how many times I get hit in the face I think that's probably my superpower if I was to have one I can get knocked down hard and be like all right there's a silver lining is you can take a breather. You can eat the tub of ice cream and then you need to get back up and you need to do it again. And so I, even if I did get hit, it's okay. It's what, it's what builds me, you know? So it was all of it, all at once. Do you like acting or directing? It's really 50-50. It really is. I, there's, I, there's not one more than, acting. I would say that acting is like my little light. Like we all have a little light inside of us. I think that loves something. And some of us don't always know, like I've known since I was five, maybe not everyone gets to know or they discover it or if they allow themselves to ask, I wonder what my light is. Like what, what brings me that glowy feeling? It's acting. Um, but there's a soul connection to directing and storytelling and speaking through story and um, reaching people. Like my whole reason to be a filmmaker is because I know that there's a kid in a basement somewhere who has not seen themselves on this, on TV, who doesn't feel heard, who feels not loved or accepted or feels like they don't have a space to go. And storytelling inspires people to know that they're not alone and that they can escape through something that they can fall in love that 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 kid can hear his own voice in there or see himself on there and go okay I'm not alone it's okay there's other people out there for me and so like that's why I film make that's why I'm doing this um yeah you know uh so directing is a is a part of my soul I guess um, another question, any advice for young women out there who try to break in the men-dominated field of directing, producing movies? You know, uh, part of me is like, buckle up. The other part of me is like, listen, you know you can do it. You know you can't. So do it. That's the main advice I have. You know you can write, go write. If you can't and you're stressed about it, 
go watch a show. Go figure out, get get specific in what you want to do so you can study what you want to do. So let's say I love rom-coms. That is where I want to live. I live in the dramedy world. That's my jam. So I love watching those. If I'm having a moment, I'm like, okay, I'm going to watch those. I'm just going to watch what is it I like about those. How do I start finding my voice and what I have to say? And then what do I got to do to get in there? Well, I have to be making stuff. And everybody says, oh, shoot with your iPhone. And sometimes that feels daunting. Like, what do you mean shoot with my iPhone? Listen, if you really want something, you have to make it happen. And it doesn't matter what scale. It means you can call actors love being on camera and they love doing stuff. You know, go, go into an acting school. Take some acting classes if you're a director. Meet some actors. Write a piece. Be like, hey, guys, do you want to do a potluck at my place? Uh, and we'll have some wine and we'll script read this and then we'll get it on its feet and I can just shoot it. And they'll be like, yeah, you know, you have to be, and, and you can do that with very little money. You can do that with no budget. Then I want you guys to start um, looking up every fellowship you can, and you're going to get so many rejections when you get them. I want you to giggle because you'll be like, Crystal told me I was getting these. Um, and then know that those rejection letters are just like, you ever watch Mario Brothers or have you ever played Mario Brothers? It was like stepping, st you know, every rejection letter, just another step under your feet because you're getting there. You just have to have total belief in the hard times that you can keep going inch by inch. That's my saying for everything, inch by inch. Just keep going, just keep reading, keep studying and keep making things and make it for you. Don't make it for them or whoever you think you want to please. That was a very long piece of advice. So I hope it wasn't too annoying. That was really good. Yeah, because you know, out there in the world, you know, know men dominating and the women are just, you know, starting to come out and mm -hmm. start to emerge. And we could do it. If you could do it, we could do it. Like with that, with Cafe Olympia Mechanic, yep. along with Tyler. And many different jobs, many different professions. So congratulations to you, Betty, the first female director under the program. And hopefully more will be coming on the bandwagon. And you know, ladies, look for the men that are real allies because we have some amazing allies. We have some men in our lives that really are like behind us. Tyler wanted to do this movie I mean, I'm sure he wanted to see his family, but a huge part of it was because of the program. That's why he signed on for it. He's offered a lot of scripts. He signed on this specifically for that. That's an ally. Randy Pope at Hallmark, you know, Joel Rice, Michael Barbuto, all these, these guys uh, were champions of me. Um, they were, they were pushing me to be the best I could be and putting their own egos aside. When you find men like that, hold on to them, love them. Um, acknowledge them uh, and then keep moving forward. Um, I last few couple of questions with a big long question. Okay. No, that's okay. Um, how did you learn to achieve all of the chat or the anger of video director behind the camera? How to do like learn it, achieve it, to make sure it was that shot. No, no, no. Let's try it this way. Mm -hmm. So, how did you work with them? That is, what, what do you like? You know, upset thing like, oh, I need to make sure this shot is right. Oh, what do you more like? Let's go with the flow. See how they need to hire your directing perspective of this movie impact your directing overall. Uh both there I, I need both so I had very specific shots that I really wanted um any shot you put in a film should be in service to the story that's number one period it should service the story so if an actor is you know uh feeling small in this moment how do I make her feel even smaller how do I make everything you know and how, what camera move do I do to tell that so I always think story first and then uh, I love to steal shots from other people that I admire, you know. There's a shot in there that I was attempting to try my version of Baz Luhrmann's Romeo and Juliet, where they look through the, you know, the fish tank. Oh, shot. 
And I was like, how can I put this in here? <laughs> oh, they can look through the cars when they talk. They can have this conversation where they come up through the car and under the car. And it made it so beautiful and romantic. You know, a, a classic car is just as romantic as a, a fish tank. So that was really fun for me to do. There's a really specific shot in there that I loved called, I titled it, me and my DP, Michael Galbraith, titled it uh, um, Small Girl, Big World. It's when she gets stressful news and she's standing. So I purposely put her in front of a, a giant truck to make her feel small, right? And then we had the camera go, I had a crane that day. What? Amazing. Uh, the crane pulled back. And the reason why it pulled back was to make her feel even smaller as, as if she was small in this big world, you know? So every shot is designed in that way. And then uh, there's other times where I'm on set and we're watching the actors and I'm like, oh, you got to push in on this. Okay, we need to come up. There's a comedic shot that I was adamant on and, um, one of my producers was like, no, we could do it like this. And I heard, no, you could also do it like this. And I was like, no, that's not funny. It's only funny when it goes like this. And they were like, okay. I was like, it has to be lateral. If we have to do this, that's funny. You know, so there's, there's certain things that are just my aesthetic. So it was definitely a combination, but story is first always in everything. Um. <laughs> How much input does the Hallmark Corporate have in the day shooting or the shooting schedule or is it on the directing team that the directors produce? I'm not sure about the actors. I don't think they really have a say in that. But like who is like the primary for the day shooting or creating the schedule? Like we're going to shoot this today. We're going to do this tomorrow. We're going to do this tonight. So Hallmark doesn't have anything to do with like the day-to-day -day shooting that, you know, they green light the movie. It's their film. They hire a, produ a producer or a production company with the knowledge that that company understands the Hallmark brand and what they're doing. Usually it's a producer or a production company like Muse who has done a ton of them in all different uh, mysteries. They've done, they do sign sealed mysteries. They've done rom-coms. They've done everything. So um, my producer had a very clear understanding of, of what they need. Um, and then it's the director's choice to come in there and try to build something a little more unique and give them something, you know, while the producer goes, hey, I think we need to get this for them. Now, Hallmark has really shifted gears <laughs> uh, in the last couple of years, right? We've seen it. They've really expanded what they're doing. They're, they're trying much more uh, unique perspectives and shots. They're allowing us to play with things that were never allowed to, to go to before, which has been amazing because it gave me the opportunity to film make, you know, and to give my point of view without um, having to follow a specific regimented uh, aesthetic. They let me play a little bit. Now I have to keep it still in the Hallmark brand. Um, and I have to understand that, but the producers on the ground to go through the schedule with an assistant director and with me. So we would sit together and be like, we're shooting this. This is what locations are available. Like the day-to-day -day shooting is really handled by people on the ground. I, because it was a Baker Mark program, had pretty much every exec decide to come say hi to me. <laughs> Not to put any pressure on me, but uh, luckily I have a wonderful relationship with them. So when they came, it was like having my friends there. But they did come to set to just, you know, take a look, make sure everything's looking good, making sure everything is going well. And they do a, a, have final approval on everything. So final approval on shooting scripts, final approval on, once I send a director's cut, my producer then does a cut, then the network does a cut. Okay, about the movie, what was yeah. it like working with Kristen Booth again and have to come across path with Cat Bill or Tyler? Previously, so how would you feel working with your fellow actors, your fellow family from the posters, along with Pat and Tyler and everyone else in the movie. Kristen Booth is my life. She is my everything. <laughs> um, she is my soul sister. I am obsessed with her. I love her. I want to cuddle her. I'm going to get to soon when I go shoot. I'm leaving to go shoot Sign Sealed soon. What? what? Um, so working with her, gravy. She's just kind of me in, in terms of like, yelling at me to drink water but that's because she's my sister 
So she would sit behind the monitors going, did you drink your water? <laughs> like, no. And then she would throw a bottle of water at me. Uh, but that's what sisters do. We take care of each other, you know. Uh, working with her, easy peasy, pudding and pie. And she is so talented. She literally lights the screen up and it's not, nothing is forced. Everything is moment to moment. You have no idea where she's going next. And that feels alive on screen. It is beautiful and fun to watch. Um, Kat Barrel and I had never met before. And I was like, you know, you never, you just don't know. A toddler and I worked together and flipped that romance years and years and years ago, very briefly. Uh, I, I had like a supporting role in that. And, and that was really fun because I got to watch him. That was when he first started doing Hallmark. So it's been so fun to watch him like progress in his stardom within the community. Um, but he's the same. He was the same as when I met him on Flip That Romance, which is a, a wonderful thing. Kat Burrell, so dope. Oh my God. She's totally present, totally prepared, but willing to play. That is what you want. You want someone that knows her stuff, did their homework, but also like, what do you want to try? Should we try this? <laughs> Wait, we try this. And I'm like, yes, let's try that. Who knew? Um, and also the thing about Kat that I love too is she has a massive sci-fi following from the Erpers, from Wyona Earp. And she's really, they're really coming over and checking this out, which is so, to me, is the coolest part of this. These three fandoms together, uh, it's, you know, all kind of learning from each other. And, and maybe meeting some of the postables and being, or meeting some of the Heinies and being like, hey, you should check out the Wynonna Earp. It's super fun. It's a female driven calf. You know, that's what, that's what these are for. That's what, this is so cool. I just need to find that acronym of like, heh, not hep. It's so bad. <laughs> but like, uh, heh, I don't know. The postables, Heinies, Erpers. What do we, what do we do? We'll, we'll think of something clever. Yeah, we we'll have to think of them. Yeah. They're very good at that. I'm just gonna think. Yeah. I'm gonna put it on. Like, put it on. We can put it on and like. We're gonna figure it out. Fan. <laughs> all of them all in one. I'll just call it the C low on the down low, and it'll be all of you. I just, you know, I'm like trying to figure out what do I. Yeah. No, I'm good. Good. Um. Okay. You have a favorite moment? You have a favorite skin or part of the moon that you really, really just like? It's my favorite. Or I really love how it turned out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, them, the scene where they're sitting uh, outside in the pouring rain when it wasn't supposed to rain and I was pulling my hair out because it was raining and I was like, what is happening? <laughs> Uh, and we had already had three moves and we're shooting so much that day. We shot the roller rink that day. That was my other favorite day. But the, the rain started pouring and I was like, okay, well, what do you do? My, I always have a saying and it's Bruce Lee, you know, he talks about move like water, right? So sometimes you're throwing things, you can either try to fight it or you can move with it. And, uh, when that happened, they were like, well, we could give them umbrellas. I was like, well, we don't really have a choice. So yeah, what kind, what umbrellas do you have? And then they came out and they had one red and one blue and that was not planned. And that's part of my color palette. And I was like, okay, okay universe, I get it. You did this on purpose because what are the odds of the props team just happening to have the things that I needed for this? And it's my favorite scene. It's my favorite scene. Um, I, I didn't read the or anything, but where was the movie or where was the film located? Did you like bounce around from town to stay in like one area or one location? Not on that day. On that day, I was like, you know, be a good idea. You know, be a good idea. We should do three different places. One, which is an hour drive away. And I was like, it'll be fine. It'll be because I'm a crazy person. Um, and <laughs> Uh, my producer is, uh, crazy with me. So, and it was fun. In fact, it was great. We pulled it off, but you know, we, we, uh, we like to push the envelope and see what can happen. And it's my favorite scene in the film. How long was the shooting? Like how long did the uh, network get you to shoot the film? 15 days. <laughs> 15 days. That's right. 15 that days. Like a for me, but 15 days to shoot a film. Yeah. 
with si with like six people in, in all of my cast. And what was tough about this one is that there's a show and a show, right? And I talked about this with Kat this morning. There's a, there's a reality show in the television show. So I had to shoot the reality show and then I had to shoot the television show and then I had to figure out how to make it make sense and look just slightly different or how do I pop this more? Like, you know, that was cuckoo bananas if you saw my wall i actually have photos that i should post them because it's cool it's like it's like a murder board i had like pulled out every scene layered them all you know color coded them uh when i work i listen to music so i usually play music and just like make a puzzle lot of things and then put the puzzle pieces together and so it was that part was tough we were juggling a lot my dp though has like 40 years experience you know and he thank God I had him because he was really instrumental in pushing me to get stuff that I was like, it's fine. Move on. He was like, it's not fine. we got to get at least a little tighter. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna get tighter. Um, but it was a good pairing because Mike G and I got along really, really well. And at the end of shooting you guys, he, I don't know. I don't know if he'll, he'll be like, don't tell people. He bought me this beautiful painting he found at an airport auction that has every single car and, and the color palette of my movie. It's a huge giant painting and he bought it for me as a goodbye gift. And he cried and then I cried and then he cuddled me and I hugged him. <laughs> like, it was a very emotional, beautiful um, crew and film family to work with. I'm, I wanna go back to Ottawa for sure. I have a question, I want to ask question, but that question was already answered. I think I went like three or two days ago. Uh, is there another post of a movie coming up? The answer is... Yes. There's two more movies coming out, guys. Not just one, we have two. And I am stoked about it. Stoked about it! Like, I'm so excited. I can't even tell you. It's, um, I've known for so long and it was killing me. Uh, you know, because I, I'm watching my postables and they're, they're just fiercely fighting still, you know, I'm like, I, and I can't say anything, you know, and there's a million reasons for that. That's not Hallmark's fault. That's just like, we have to make sure all the ducks are in a row before we say anything. It's, it's just part of the deal. Um, and we wouldn't want to say something and then retract it if it's not ready, you know? So like the, you just have to wait and wait, but, but man, I am stoked. I have, I have spoken to Kristen, Jeff, Eric, Martha, all on email chain. Gregory Harrison, we sent one. We sent one to Zach too. You know, everyone's doing really, really well. Everyone's stoked to be back. Like we're we're all happy to be back. We love each other. Yeah, because I'm gonna tell you one thing. I remember seeing you and all of the postables in West Palm Beach, Robert yes. Palmer, and I was like. I didn't even know anything about a poster or mm -hmm. that and do the deliverance. I was like, mm, okay. Because unfortunately I came to Wama Drama for one reason only and that reason was Tyler. I'm sorry. Fair. But Fair. then after the whole event at Wama Drama, I'm like, it's bothering me. Poster I mean it's a big thing. I should, you know, maybe watch it. So I started watching from the first movie to that and I'm like, Oh, it's cute. Not it's... that bad. I was texting my friend back and forth. I'm like, Oliver needs to, you know, loosen up. And uh -huh. Rita, she's my favorite. She's so quirky. She's so, like, like a librarian. And yeah. I learn. I am too. But yes. I'm watching. I'm an alcoholic. At the end, I was like, there could be more, right? My friend was like, I'm going like, to have to be more. We need to have babies or something. I know. It has to be more. But it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It I like how each movie or each have their own story. I'm trying to remember if I remember that my favorite one. Um, I think my favorite one, I don't know what the name of it. I don't remember. But we're about a little boy. We were looking for him. Yeah. Okay. Yes. The road less traveled, I think. Yeah. Ladder on the mirror. Yeah. yeah. Road less traveled. Yeah. My favorite one. Yeah. Well, all of them are my favorite, but I thought that really resonated with me. I'm so glad you watched them. The thing about the science field, the, mar the writing is really good. Martha's a very good writer. And you can watch them over and over again, and you're always going to get some sort of other message. And the message is always hope. 
you know, like it's really hope driven, love driven. And I, I love Norman and Rita. I love being Rita. She's the cutest. And also her and Norman's relationship. Also, the thing that I love about Norman and Rita is there's not really anybody like them on Hallmark. We're very different than everybody else on Hallmark, on any of their channels, any of their shows. There's a uniqueness to us, uh, our characters, that I think resonates with a lot of people. Like a lot of people have come up and said, hey, my my I, the best fan letter I got was somebody saying that their daughter was very embarrassed about wearing her glasses and at school and she was being teased. And then she started watching Sign Sealed and saw my episode where I said, no, I, this is who I am. And now she's wearing her glasses all the time. And she said, this is who I am. I was like, what? Oh my God. You know, I was like sobbing when I read that because like that's actively helping somebody feel good about who they are and love themselves because I get to do a job that I love. Like what a gift that, that to me is, it's the best part of being on that show. Oh, I'm so glad you like it. I'm so glad you watched them. Yeah, but I mean, because I'm late with everything, because I'm so focused into Hallmark movies and all of that. So I'm like, hmm. Mm -hmm. I like it. <laughs> well, my friend Ashley, she was a girl. I'm like, okay, okay, I'm sorry. I'm watching. I'm texting the call. I'm like, I'm like, I don't know what I do. Uh, yes. I need to try something. I put a drink or something. <laughs> Well, the, that's the funny part about the Oliver character too, right? He drives you crazy. He's like, come on, man, loosen up. Just, But that's what's so beautiful about him and Kristen's thing. Because, And let me tell you, we are those people in real life. Like when you get us all at a table, Eric is so prepped. You know, everything is specifically put together. And he's really, and Boothie's like, I'm going to just poke the bear. I'm going to poke the bear. <laughs> and me and Jeff are off like messing around, sputzing around, doing something. We are, it's, it's very true to form of who we are. And, and now, and then when you see Oliver loosen up, it's so nice. You know, you see him like undo his tie and you're like, ah, oh, he's in there. It's super fun to watch. Okay. Um, I know we have a little bit of time left, but before I let some people in, mm -hmm. I wanted to turn over to do for a few minutes. If you have any questions about me, Oh, you're curious about anything. I do. How did you get into starting this podcast and what made you find and adore Tyler Hines like this? Tell me, tell me everything. Well, I wanted to do it after West Palm Beach. Not just for Hallmark, just to mm. like get into it and then slowly branch out in different platforms. Different topics, so I'm like actors, actresses, authors, um, directors, writers. I'm trying to branch it out, and I'm also doing like topics or issues that need to be out in the world, and people need to be more aware of. Like I just did an anti-bully platform with Team Upstanders and Trevor Donovan to get it out there. Bully not okay. Why? How can you improve it? How can you stop mm -hmm. it? And how can you prevent it from happening? And I'm a special needs mom with my mm -hmm. special needs child, my son. And I wanted to get that out there, like what kind of challenges and what kind of support all of mm -hmm. that for special needs mom because they need to know they're not alone. I'm not yes. alone. So I'm trying to branch out different topics. So right now I'm working on a mini podcast doing about that culture, like what they could do or what you can't do to a deaf person, what's okay, what's not okay, and how that culture is very important to deaf individuals, especially for me, and how people need to be aware of it, not mock it, or the oh, disability, she's not normal, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I'm normal. Yes. All of that. So I tried to spread out the yeah. platform. So that's how I started. It took me, I think, it was about a year after Rama Drama. I'm like, I don't know. I'm a full time mom. I'm a full time teacher. I have a life. You know, my phone's like, do it. Put your podcast based on your life, your schedule. If you do one podcast a month, if you do yeah. five a month, yeah. all that kind of thing. So, yeah. This April will be my one year anniversary, so we'll see what happens. 
Well, this is the thing, right? Like I, this is why I love that Hallmark is doing this mentorship because we are in desperate need. And this is not just Hallmark. This is like an industry-wide thing of new voices, <laughs> new perspective, new, uh, because the more we see you talking about things, the more we go, oh, that's a different perspective. I didn't even think about it like that. I didn't even know you were, I didn't even know you were dealing with that or this or emotionally having to go through that or or, you know, I think nowadays we're also very afraid to just ask people questions. Um, and I, I I'm obviously don't have the experience with being and having disabilities like you have the experience, but I can imagine that I just want people to ask me straight up, you know, like it's just easier and, and you can do it in a way that's, that's kind and uh, about learning. And so like you doing this, I think is crucial. And again, mm -hmm. people seeing themselves, people seeing you and seeing themselves in you and knowing that they're, that's, it's a, you know, there's, there's people out there putting themselves out and being successful at it. It is uh, such a beautiful thing. Like it really is inspiring other people to find their, their little light and find their greatness. That is hands down the best thing ever. And you're doing it. You're doing it right now, Kat. It's been a year. Yeah. It's pretty cool. And you teach and you're a mom, which is exhausting because I am one as well. And I know, and you know, yeah. we come with all that mom guilt too, right? It's like, we want to do something for ourselves, but we don't want to, you know, I'm, I have so much mom guilt. I have mom guilt right now. You know, like this morning I had a bunch of stuff I had to do. So I had to take the kids early and then I felt guilty about that. And I was like, I only dropped them off 10 minutes early. He's, you know, my son's having an Easter egg hunt right now. It's not that big of a deal, but I feel bad. It's weird. Um, how old is your, is it not, you just have one son? My son, I have a daughter and a son. My daughter is in eighth grade, and my huh. son is in fifth grade. So, oh, wow. Yeah, they're not paying oh, I'm, so, I'm so stressed about that time period. I'm so nervous. It's so much easier when there's just like two, you know, and pooping and peeing, and like that's my biggest concern. It's the teenage stuff that I'm like, here we yeah. go. I'm in the middle of a So if you have questions or advice when it's your time, I'm available. I will, I will reach out. <laughs> okay. I'm going to let two people in. They're part of the watch party. So I wanted to give them an opportunity to say hello to do and have one burning question for you. Great. So please Take welcome it. Kathy and Ashley. Look at us. We're just sitting here hoping to see them. I'm like, where are they? Where are, do I get to see them? Does this come up? Yeah, they, you will oh. see the face once they start talking. Got it. <laughs> okay, so we have Ashley and we have Hello. Kim. Welcome to the Cat Jail Podcast. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm um, good. good. How are you? You know, just jacked up on a lot of coffee. So much coffee. <laughs> hey. Uh, hey, Cassie. Hi. Hi. So, Ashley and Kathy, if you have one or two burning questions, but quick the load, Ashley directed the famous movie, Tripping and Gears, that comes yeah. out tomorrow night. Woohoo! Yay! Ashley, go ahead. I know you got a question. Okay. My question is what was it like to transition from in front of the camera to behind the camera as a director? Uh, great, because I got to be bossy and tell everyone what to do. That was my favorite part. <laughs> like, um, yeah, I'm in charge now, guys. So um, it was good. It felt in the very, very beginning when I was doing my shorts, it was terrifying. Uh, the first time I ever felt uh, anxiety, and I didn't know I had anxiety, was the first time I directed a short. And I called my mom and I was like, something's happening. I'm having a heart attack. I'm lying on the floor. I'm having a heart attack. And she was like, oh no, that's just anxiety, honey. We, our whole family gets it. I was like, what? What is anxiety? Like, what are you talking about? So it was intense back then, but this time it just felt right. You know, I've been waiting, I've been waiting for so long. I've been fighting for so long. Um, and I'm going, I, I found out a while ago that I was going to be shooting some more science yields. So, you know, I know I get to go back to acting too. So it doesn't feel like I'm giving one up for the other. I get to do both, which is nice. Good. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I actually don't have a question because I'm just really anxious to see this podcast that I'm sure Kat covered all my questions. 
and I'm just really honored to get to meet you right now. Oh, I'm so happy to meet you too. Um, I hope you like the movie. I, I hope you all like the movie because um, it's my baby. But also, you know, I think what I've seen, A, with Hallmark and B, with this film is when women band together, we are completely and totally unstoppable. And we don't do it in a, like a brute forceful way because we don't need to. We do it in a um, straight, steady pace. So like, you know, yeah. thank you so much for supporting me and supporting the film. And it might, I think sometimes it doesn't feel like you're making a difference, like one person, but you are like turning your TV on. And you, even if you go and turn it on and go cook some, I mean, Tyler's on it, so you're going to watch it. But if, if it's not, and you put it on and you go cook some dinner, it doesn't matter. It's the fact that you consciously are going, I'm supporting this program. I'm going to fight for these women to get their voices heard. And hopefully I can deliver um, something that makes you feel something, you know, something makes you fall in love again. That's the, my, my whole goal. So looks like a fun one. So I'm excited. Me fun. too. Yeah, it's fun. And Tyler and Kat. So like win-win, you know? Yeah. It's, are you guys heinies? Oh, absolutely. Uh, yes. You are. <laughs> and have you guys met him? I have. Have you met You have? Yes, yeah. I have too. Oh, good. This is great. Yeah, he's lovely. You know, he's exactly what you think he is. Um, I think people are so terrified of him. It's really funny. I'm like, he, he, he's totally normal, guys. He's just very, very <laughs> handsome, you know? That's, that's, that's confusing. Um, but yeah, he, and you're going to love him in this. He's, he, eh, well, he's riding a motorcycle on a suit. So you're welcome. Uh, Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was telling the girls, like I was telling the girls, I was at work and then run that clip off the trail of Tyler with the motorcycle the banana. I was like, oh my God, and my students when I was wrong, I'm nothing, nothing. I just can't handle it. And my, oh. one of my students were like, is it your hallmark husband, Tyler? What did you mean? I was like, whoa. I dare yeah. you, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, they need to calm down. Act those two girls, they know me too well. Oh my God, that's so funny. So I'm going to tell you guys some, I, I, I have not talked about this on any other podcast. So this is a little tidbit just for you, Kat. Um, a, Aisha really pushed for that. Aisha is our uh, executive, as you know, and is a big fan of Tyler. She pushed for that suit. Uh, Tyler wanted the bandana, which I thought was super cool because we never get to see stuff like that on Hallmark, right? Like I was like, oh, yeah. bad boy. Um, and then look at Tyler's helmet. Uh, there is like a cross there and he put the initials for me, Mike Barbudo, our producer, him and Kat. I don't know if he's talked about that, but that's he chose that and he did the design on the helmet, which was super cool okay, and really fun. Cool. Yeah. And, and then I got to show you guys something. You know what? I'm going to show you guys something because I haven't showed anyone else this and I'm looking at it right now. This is the welding mask that Kat wears. Oh, my. oh nice. And it that's was all nice. hand painted by my, uh, one of my props geniuses. And then they signed it all for me inside. So I got to take that home with me. Isn't that so cool? Yay. That's yes, cool. Awesome. I loved it. I was like, I'm taking that. That's mine. I should, probably should have given it to Kat. I didn't. Uh, <laughs> but I'll buy her chocolate. So, you know. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I think you, well, you got the, the better thing, though. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I, you know, I had to take one. Prop. She, all of my team, everything they did was like hand painted all the cars that are in the film. Um, I've said this before, but I'll tell you guys again, when you're looking at the car, the uh, Thunderbird that Kat drives, that was my homage to Thelma and Louise. Cause that was like one of the first feminist movies of our time, you know, and I, and they found it for me and I was like, hell yeah, we're gonna get a Thelma Louise reference in there. So that the car guys went out and got it for me and set everything up. Nice. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad I got to come on this and this chat. Thank you, Kat, for having me. Yeah, thanks for having me too, Kat, real quick. Thank, thanks for having me too. No problem. Yeah. Thank you for all of you joining for a quick pop in at the Cat Chat Podcast. And to my subscribers, fans out there, make sure you follow all of us on Instagram and tune in for Shifting Games tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Thank you for being here. Bye. Bye. Party time. <laughs> Thank you, Kat.
It's a pleasure. It was super fun um, meeting. I wanted to say, um, if you're interested, if you cannot, that's fine. But the uh, the watch party girls and I are going to personally master you, Taylor and Cat, the Doom Blank. And if you want to, like, pop in the watch oh, cool. party of the movie and just oh, see the yeah. hype or whatever, because I know Canada is not in at the same time as the United States. I know. It's, it's so annoying. Soon. So, so I will send you the link as soon as I create it, and then feel free to be able to pop in or not. Okay, that's wonderful. That sounds great. Thank you so much, Kat. You were absolutely lovely. Keep doing what you're doing. Don't stop. Thank you. Thank you. I do okay. keep what you're doing too. And I look oh, I'm going to see more movies yeah. that you possibly yeah. direct in the future. Who knows? I got it happening guys it'll happen because of you guys that's what's going to happen so thank you yeah. have a great night thank you Bye.